if there's anything that's uh, challenging about question eight is it's uh, kind of figuring out uh, the uh, figuring out the setup because it's all word description and, um, and making sure to use the right uh, speed. So uh, let me just uh, draw the picture and then I will um, I'll, I'll not do the the remainder of the question. Um, so it, it says an effect analogous to two solid interference can occur with the sound waves instead of light in an open field. Two speakers placed the 1.1 meter apart. So I have two speakers placed some distance apart. And what these speakers serve as is they are the um, the source of they are the point source of sound. And uh, I, I think I'm for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna assume that they are in phase so that it's uh, exactly like our double slit interference questions. Um, so those are my slits. And uh, it says, are powered by a single function generator producing sine waves at some frequency. Oh, so that's the one thing you would have to watch out for. They are giving you frequency instead of wavelength. And when you figure out the way, uh, geometry, what matters is gonna be the wavelength. So you have to relate that to the frequency. Wavelength is the speed of the wave divided by frequency. So from this, you have to get the wavelength of the wave that you're dealing with. So it's a student who walks along a line 0 0.5 meters away. Okay, so there's a, a something that's 0 0.5 meters or sorry, 10.5 meters away. And I really hope the wavelength when you're working out, it's much smaller than this so that you can use a small angle approximation, all the things we take for granted for double solid interference, a line parallel to the line between the speakers. So this would be the line between the speakers. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is what it means. Because if uh, somehow the student is walking along here, then uh, uh, the question doesn't make sense. <laughs> so as the student uh, walks along this line, uh, it's the thing she hears an alternating pattern of loud and quiet uh, due to the constructive and destructive interference. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, A is asking, it's trying to guide you. It's asking you this question, which you need to figure out anyway. So good. <laughs> and B is, okay, the distance between the central maximum and the first uh, loud position. So it's asking for this, um, this uh, delta Y. And you can figure that out using the same condition for uh, first order interference maximum for double solid interference. So, so yeah, the numbers are unusual. The setup is a little bit different than usual, but once you take the time to uh, draw the picture and uh, get something that's analogous to our description of double solid interference, um, then it should make the most sense. So let me leave that there. Um, and the, I, I think this question, it, uh, so um, we are actually covering N-slit interference uh, this week instead of last week, but I think in terms of understanding what the question means, it's, uh, um, I, I think it's easy enough because this is, I guess, the thing to watch out for. When you look at the, um, multiple slit interference, one thing that is nice is that the position of the, what we call principal maxima don't change because these are determined by constructive interference between neighboring slits. So as long as you have the distance between the neighboring slits, then the conditions that produce the principal maxima don't change. So it's exactly the same as if it were double slit. And, um, and it's, you know, it's just asking what's the third order principal maximum, fourth order principal maximum. So you would basically use the same expressions that you would use for uh, double slit. So the fact that it's 10 doesn't 
actually change anything. And uh, the same thing here. If we were asking you something about these uh, interference minima, then it would get more interesting. But I, I think I'm deliberately not asking you those questions because interesting also means difficult. So. Um, yeah, and uh, I think I lecture more um, thoroughly on ancillary interference this way. Because your textbook is ordered a little bit weird. This multiple slit interference, it's actually most uh, closely related to something that we call diffraction grading. So they kind of belong together, you know, infinite number of slits or large number of slits. But your textbook has it separated into two chapters. So, so. <laughs> so. So yeah, I, I think uh, I, I didn't go over. I think it's easy enough that I don't need to go over that question. And I think the rest are doable. If uh, you know any questions come up, let me know. I'll do my best to answer. Um, 